In the first chapter of On the Origin of Species, Charles Darwin examines variation under domestication. He begins by discussing how domestic animals and plants have been bred for specific traits over many generations to produce a variety of breeds that are distinct from their wild ancestors. He then goes on to discuss artificial selection as an example of this process, noting how breeders can select certain characteristics in order to create new varieties with desired qualities such as size or coloration. Finally, he looks at natural selection and its role in producing variations within species which may be beneficial or detrimental depending upon environmental conditions. In conclusion, Darwin argues that all living things must undergo some form of change due to external influences if they are going to survive long term, thus making it possible for evolution through natural selection occur over time. In Chapter 2, Darwin discusses the importance of variation in nature. He explains that all living things have some degree of variability and this is essential for natural selection to occur. Variation can be caused by both external factors such as climate or food supply, but also internal ones like genetic inheritance from parents or random mutations during reproduction. This means that individuals within a species may differ slightly from one another which gives them an advantage when it comes to survival and reproductive success over time. In addition, he notes how different varieties are often adapted better than others depending on their environment, thus providing evidence for his theory of evolution through natural selection where only those best suited will survive while weaker variants die out eventually leading to new forms being created over generations due to these changes in traits passed down genetically between offspring's parentage lines. Finally, he concludes with discussing artificial selection humans selecting certain characteristics they desire and its similarities with what happens naturally under nature's guidance. In Chapter 3 of On the Origin of Species, Charles Darwin discusses how species struggle for existence in order to survive. He explains that more offspring are produced than can possibly survive and this leads to a competition between individuals within each species as well as with other organisms. This is known as the war of nature where only those best adapted will be able to thrive while others perish due to their inability or lack thereof when it comes adaptation. In addition, he states that natural selection acts on these variations which have been inherited from parents, however, some traits may not appear until later generations because they were recessive genes passed down by ancestors but never expressed before then. Furthermore, he argues against Malthus' idea about population growth being limited by food supply since there are many factors such as climate change and disease outbreaks which could also limit population size over time if left unchecked thus leading back into his discussion about survival of the fittest theory again here too. Finally at end chapter 3 concludes with an overview summarizing all points made throughout its entirety namely that variation exists among living things, both plants and animals, inheritance plays a role determining who survives slash thrives better than others based upon what adaptations they possess, ultimately resulting in evolution through natural selection process itself. In chapter 4, Darwin explains the concept of natural selection. He states that species are not immutable and can change over time due to environmental pressures such as competition for resources or predation by other animals. Natural selection is a process whereby those individuals with advantageous traits will survive and reproduce more successfully than their less advantaged counterparts, this leads to an increase in the frequency of these beneficial characteristics within a population over successive generations. In addition, he discusses how variation among members of a species may be caused by sexual reproduction, which introduces new combinations, or through random mutations which occur during replication processes like meiosis or mitosis. Finally, he argues that if certain conditions remain constant then populations should eventually become adapted to their environment leading them towards greater complexity and diversity while still retaining some degree of similarity between related organisms. Chapter 5 of On the Origin of Species by Charles Darwin focuses on laws governing variation. He begins with a discussion about how variations occur in nature, and then moves to discuss why some traits are more common than others. He explains that there is no single law which governs all cases, rather, different causes can produce similar effects under certain conditions. For example, he notes that climate has an influence on many characteristics such as size or coloration but also points out other factors like nutrition and use slash disuse may be at play too. 
Additionally, he discusses inheritance patterns including blending inheritance, where two parents' traits blend together, versus non-blending, where one parent's trait dominates. Finally, Darwin concludes this chapter by noting that although we cannot predict what will happen when new varieties arise from existing ones due to their complexity, it does appear likely they will become modified over time if exposed to changing environmental pressures for long enough periods. In Chapter 6 of On the Origin of Species, Charles Darwin discusses difficulties in accepting his theory. He begins by noting that many people have difficulty believing species can change over time and become distinct from one another due to their complexity. To address this issue, he explains how natural selection works it acts on small variations within a population which are then passed down through generations until they accumulate into larger changes between populations or even new species entirely. Darwin also addresses objections related to the fossil record not showing gradual transitions between different forms as well as those who argue against evolution because no transitional fossils exist at all, both issues stem from an incomplete understanding of geological processes rather than any fault with evolutionary theory itself. Additionally, some believe there is too much variation among individuals for them to be descended from common ancestors but Darwin counters this argument by pointing out that domesticated animals show far more variability than wild ones yet still remain members of the same species, a phenomenon known today as artificial selection caused by human intervention and breeding practices. Finally, he notes how difficult it is for humans, or other observers, to recognize when two varieties should actually be considered separate species since these distinctions often depend upon subtle differences only visible under close examination or comparison with closely related organisms, thus making identification challenging without extensive study and experience observing such creatures firsthand. In Chapter 7 of On the Origin of Species, Charles Darwin discusses instinct and its implications for evolution. He begins by noting that instincts are complex behaviors which appear to be inherited in animals, such as bees building hives or spiders spinning webs. These actions cannot have been learned through experience since they occur even when no prior knowledge is present, thus it appears that these behaviors must be innate rather than acquired from external sources. Darwin then goes on to discuss how natural selection can act upon instinctive behavior if an animal has a particular trait which gives them some advantage over their competitors, such as being able to build better nests, this will increase their chances of survival and reproduction leading eventually to the spread of this advantageous trait throughout the population via inheritance. In addition, he notes that certain traits may become more pronounced due to sexual selection, i.e., those individuals with particularly impressive displays or abilities related directly or indirectly with mating success tend also tend towards greater reproductive success overall compared with other members within a species who lack such features slash abilities. Finally, Darwin suggests that many seemingly useless instincts could actually serve important functions at different stages during development, e. In Chapter 8 of On the Origin of Species, Charles Darwin discusses hybridism and its implications for his theory. He begins by noting that hybrids are often sterile when crossed with either parent species or other related species, however, he notes exceptions to this rule in which some hybrids can produce fertile offspring. This suggests a close relationship between different varieties within a single species as well as between distinct but closely related species. To further illustrate this point, Darwin provides examples from plants and animals showing how interbreeding has produced new forms through hybridization over time. In addition to providing evidence for evolution via natural selection, these cases also demonstrate the importance of variation among individuals within populations, variation upon which natural selection acts in order to drive evolutionary change across generations. Finally, Darwin argues that although there is much still unknown about hybridism and its effects on speciation processes more broadly speaking it does provide an important mechanism whereby two separate lineages may become united into one population again after having been separated due to geographical isolation or other factors. In Chapter 9 of On the Origin of Species, Charles Darwin discusses how imperfections in the geological record can be explained. He notes that many species have become extinct before they could leave any fossilized remains and suggests that this is due to a lack of suitable conditions for preservation or because their habitats were too limited geographically. Additionally, he argues that some organisms may not even have been preserved at all if they lived only briefly during certain periods when sedimentary deposits weren't being formed. 
Furthermore, he states that it's likely there are still undiscovered fossils out there waiting to be found as well as those which will never come into view due to erosion or other factors such as metamorphism changing them beyond recognition over time. Finally, Darwin concludes by noting how these gaps in our knowledge make it difficult for us to understand fully what has happened throughout Earth's history but also encourages further research so we can continue piecing together its past one discovery at a time. Chapter 10 of On the Origin of Species by Charles Darwin discusses how geological succession is related to organic beings. He explains that species have changed over time, and this change can be seen in the fossil record. The fossils found in different layers represent organisms from different periods, thus, they provide evidence for evolution through natural selection. Furthermore, he states that there are gaps between certain groups which cannot be explained by any known cause other than extinction or migration due to changing environmental conditions such as climate changes or geographical barriers like mountains forming etc. Additionally, he notes that some extinct forms appear suddenly without a traceable ancestor while others show gradual transitions with their predecessors suggesting both sudden appearance and slow transformation occur simultaneously during evolutionary history. Finally, Darwin concludes his chapter discussing how geology has provided strong support for his theory on descent with modification via natural selection since it shows clear patterns of successive development among living things throughout Earth's past. In Chapter 11 of On the Origin of Species, Charles Darwin discusses geographical distribution. He begins by noting that species are not distributed randomly across the globe but instead tend to be clustered in certain areas and absent from others. This is especially true for closely related species which often inhabit similar regions or even identical habitats within those regions. To explain this phenomenon, he proposes two main theories firstly, that some organisms may have been created specifically adapted to particular climates, secondly, that many animals migrate over long distances due to changes in climate or other environmental factors such as food availability and competition with other species. In addition to these explanations for why different groups of organisms might occupy distinct geographic ranges today, Darwin also considers how they could have come into existence through natural selection acting on small variations between individuals living at different locations around the world over time, a process known as centers of creation theory, or allopatric speciation. Finally, he suggests another possible explanation based on dispersal events where populations become isolated after being separated geographically before eventually evolving independently from one another an idea now referred to as vicarious biogeography. Darwin begins by discussing the geographical distribution of plants and animals, noting that they are often found in distinct areas. He then discusses how species can become adapted to their environment over time through natural selection. Darwin also notes that some organisms have a wide range while others may be confined to one area or region, he suggests this is due to dispersal from an ancestral home as well as adaptation for local conditions. In addition, he explains why certain groups of related species tend to inhabit similar regions, this phenomenon is known as centers of creation where new varieties arise more frequently than elsewhere on Earth. Finally, Darwin considers the effects climate change has had on animal distributions throughout history and speculates about future changes based upon current trends in global warming. In Chapter 13 of On the Origin of Species, Charles Darwin discusses how organic beings can be grouped together based on their similarities. He explains that morphological characteristics such as shape and structure are often used to classify organisms into groups, however, he notes that these features may not always accurately reflect an organism's true affinities with other species. Embryology is another tool for determining mutual affinities between different species since embryos tend to pass through similar stages during development regardless of differences in adult form or function. Finally, rudimentary organs, organs which have lost much or all of their original functions but still remain present within a given species, are also useful indicators when attempting to determine evolutionary relationships among various creatures due to the fact they provide evidence about past adaptations and changes over time. Chapter 14 of On the Origin of Species by Charles Darwin is a recapitulation and conclusion. In this chapter, he summarizes his main points from throughout the book that species have evolved over time through natural selection, that variation within populations can be beneficial or detrimental to their survival, 
and that these variations are passed down between generations. He also discusses how different forms of life may arise due to environmental pressures such as climate change, competition for resources, etc., which lead to adaptations in order for organisms to survive better in certain conditions than others. Finally, he concludes with an outro stating how all living things on Earth share common ancestry, something we now know more about thanks largely due to advances made since publication of The Origin of Species 150 years ago.